So, I'll just make this quick. It's election day in America, and I'm totally, totally nervous because, as the polls show, it could go either way. What I find really funny about that is I've been voting now for, well, um, since Bill Clinton's second term, and <laughs> what's ironic about it is I've never really had a choice on who to vote for. Like, one party totally denies that I have any civil rights, and the other party um, has always, is, is since I've been alive, been moving, moving towards even just having a discussion with us. One party doesn't even acknowledge that, that and doesn't even acknowledge me as a human, and the other party is has been apprehensive in the past. Now, it's no secret that the one party that I'm talking about is Republican and the other is Democrat. But what, when I talk about I, of course some of you have already assumed, if you don't already know me, that I'm gay. Because you can see that I'm black. Um, but I'm also working class. I'm also a non-Christian. Um, well, I'm not working class now. I'm, I, but I have working class roots. And, 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 those, and the value to stand in solidarity with people who don't have what I have um, comes from my working class background. And these are all things, be it because of gay issues, be it uh, people of color, be it working class values. The Republican Party is just vacuous. It's, it's totally empty. Um, you listen to, it's not just what they say because they're so careful, but just look at the whole Mitt's binders full of women comment. I think that made clear to a lot of people that he's really condescending. Um, people said afterwards, well, don't you know any women? You've been working in this profession for, you know, decades. Don't you actually know any qualified women? I mean, that kind of thing. But you can see that when, when asked to speak freely, he's always condescending. He's always, you know, them those people. It's always this otherness, this othering, this kind of exotic other that you hear, and that's how they've spoken about gay people. I believe that marriage is putting a man, you know, and never do they actually just even address the rights of people. So even when all the bullying went on with, um, with gay suicides and that sort of thing over the past few years, you haven't heard them take up the stance of, well, as Christians and as family people, we don't support bullying. They may have mentioned it in passing, but as but when standing on a podium and asked to address it, they don't even address us as individuals. And the same thing for blacks. I mean, I'm not. I don't have to go back to the days of Willie Horton to talk about it. But you hear Mitt Romney. You know, you ask him about um, anything about black people, and he starts talking about welfare and pop. You know, these are issues that concern us, but not all of us are on welfare. Ask him about immigration, and he's just talking about illegals. So, I mean, it's just a whole... I mean, I'm a son, a son of an immigrant, and my, you know, uh, my father came from, from Africa. There's no way that we, uh, we could have swam over, you know. So, almost by definition, we're more than likely a legal immigrant. But for people to see that, when they, when you, you know, you hear this creeping out, they've never just addressed me as a human being. And so I've never, since in my entire voting career, had a choice of who to vote for. It's never, I've never been able to say, well, I wonder what they think about this policy, and I wonder what they think about that policy. No, it's to say, who can, who, who, who even sees me as a part of the conversation? So, Barack Obama is clearly that person. Um, of this time. Now, is he a messiah? No. Is he a savior? No. Is he God? No. Is he Jesus? No. Is he, you know, um, but is he an American? Well, you might doubt it if you listen to Fox because I just heard someone now say, I'm voting for Mitt Romney because he's a real American. You know what that means. I'm voting for Mitt Romney because the other guy might be Muslim and with the implicit assumption that Muslims are some other. Again, that, that's the talk. You hear them talk about Islam, and you think, well, do you actually know a Muslim person? Same thing I say. So, again, um, it's a falsehood to say that, that, that people like me have ever had a choice of who to vote for. Um, with that said, this is an invitation for white voters. How does it feel um, <clears throat> in the modern era to have whiteness um, on stage now, to sort of have people saying, well, that's not quite right. And the fact is, with social media, we can see things are more transparent. So all the things that I've just mentioned, 
you can actually just go on YouTube and, and search mint this, mint that, and you'll see that everything I'm saying is just, it's not a matter of conjecture. It's just, we're not human to them. Um, and the fact that there are so many people who that's gone on for so long, I, I do wonder how that affects masses of white people to see that, you know, when people talk about whiteness, you know, white, white pride, um, it doesn't mean the same thing as black pride. You know, white pride um, has always uh, historically meant the downfall of all others versus black pride has meant empower empowerment. So I'm just wondering, what is it like to be um, white, to have sort of before felt like, I'm just choosing them based on my ideology, versus now we can no longer say that that's true. Because now we're, we're, we're at least aware that there are some people who just are more human than others. Vote.